In 78 days, South Africans head to the polls for the 2024 general elections. Ahead of this, the African Christian Democratic Party launched its 2024 election manifesto at Ellis Park Arena in Doerenfontein this past Saturday. Amongst others, the party detailed its key areas of concern and focus regarding the various socio-economic challenges that the country is facing. Good evening, my name is Gershwin Brooks, standing in for Tabo Molokane. Um, welcome to this edition of Soweto Today. Tonight we take a look at the recently launched African Christian Democratic Party's election manifesto and try to get a better understanding of what the party's objectives and plans are ahead of the elections. Joining us in studio, uh, we're going to have a conversation with the party's president, that is of course Reverend Kenneth Meshwe. Uh, good evening to you, Reverend, and thank you for joining us this evening. Good evening, sir, and thank you very much for inviting me to one of the best stations in South Africa, oh, so most TV. Definitely. Most definitely. Mm. No, it's only great to have you. Reverend, the ACDP recently launched its uh, manifesto at the Ellis Park Indoor Arena in Durenfontein. Can you please tell us more about the launch itself and whether it met the expectations of the party? The theme of our manifesto is uh, the people of South Africa are sending out an SOS message. You know, when you hear about SOAs, you hear about an emergency, you hear mm. about people being in distress. And that is what's happening in South Africa, because South Africa is almost sinking in hopelessness, obviously, and also poverty. Things are not improving, but things are degenerating. So we are saying we are degenerating, we are sinking, and people want a way out. Mm. Okay, the issue of crime was one of our major topic. Actually, we started with that. I started with that when I spoke, because if crime is not eradicated, you can't talk about economic growth. You can't talk about anything. Why? Because investors need a secure, safe place to invest, because they are concerned about their lives, personal lives. They are concerned about their families. They are concerned about their assets what they work for, they want to ensure that if some workers are not happy with whatever, that they're not going to burn down the building and destroy what they have worked for. So the issue of crime is what the ACDP has focused on and obviously with time permitting we'll tell more about what we, we believe has to be done to eradicate crime. But the message of the SOS is very well received because people are saying, you are saying what you are saying. This is our cry. Who is going to help us? And we have said, look now to the ACDP. It is time to listen to what we are saying. Don't just vote as you, as you always did all these years and say, no, sure. my blood is black, red, you know, black, green, and gold. Those days are over. We are sinking. Now we want a way out. And to get the way out, look at the different manifestos and hear what different parties are saying. Indeed, you mentioned that you, of course, started on the theme of crime, but uh, we also saw other areas of focus that you touched on, which include corruption, economic policies, uh, infrastructure, as well as energy, amongst others. So can you please take us through some of these issues that the ACDP has identified um, as key issues? All right. Crime, obviously, as I said, it's the main one. And then come to economic development. And that couple it with uh, poverty, uh, that is in the country that mm. we want to alleviate it. Now, if you talk about poverty alleviation, what are we going to do? Your economy must grow. When the economy grows, jobs are created. And as jobs are created, then people get jobs. And the more people get jobs, the more poverty is being alleviated. Poverty goes down because joblessness becomes something of the past. But we have to ensure that there is economic growth. Now from there then obviously we looked at the issue of power, of ESCOM, and we are tired, all right? We are tired of these low shadings. We know particularly in 2020 what happened uh, when people were, when we were locked down, when there was no power, people lost jobs, people lost homes, people lost assets, people lost businesses. When there is no electricity, when there is no power, people will mm. lose whatever they work for. Even people who manage to get some food for a month and put it in the fridge, that food rots. Yeah. So, so the issue of lack of power affects us all and we want to see that corrected. 
How is that correct? The ACDP is saying, we remind the country that in 2010, uh, around 2010, ESCOM won the best power utility in the whole world. Mm -hmm. There was a competition okay, in New York. And the number one power utility was ESCOM. Not in Germany, not in London, but in South Africa. So the question has to be asked, how can you move from being the best in the world to being among the worst now? Because I, I was surprised the first time I went to Nigeria that during the day, there's no lights. We just hear J -j 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 engines all over. We are doing the same thing now. But the question is, how do you rectify this? Where did the caravan, current government go wrong? All right? And we believe, as the ACDP, obviously, let me not go to the past where they went wrong, but what is being suggested right now? Mm. Okay? Gre introducing green energy. ACDP is in agreement with that, sure. but not at the expense of coal power stations. Reverend, before we get to the break, I have to ask you this one. Of course, um, and, and you touched on it very briefly because it impacted jobs, it impacted mm -hmm. livelihoods, and that was the impact that COVID-19 had on our economy. Now, now, one of the things that you mentioned in your manifesto is the way that COVID-19 had impacted it. So what, if any, proposed solutions do you have for the people who have yet to recover from uh, COVID-19 and the resultant lockdown? Well, um, people who still have to recover must demand um, uh, compensation from government. Government did a foolish thing, I must say, a foolish thing, because they signed an agreement while knowing that they are not given all the facts, okay? You go to, if you go to a shop, to a clinic, or you go to a, a, a pharmacy, then you are given medication, whether it's tablets or whether it's liquid medication. Inside, you'll find a paper mm. that gives you the contraindications, that tells you the dangers, what to, to expect, and also for people who don't know, also to say to them, there are some, to some people, you will uh, have issues if you use this medication because there are reactions to different medication. So, but when government signed for during COVID for, for vaccines, they had no knowledge of what, the, whether that medication was going to cause us any harm or not. They didn't know, they just accepted. And if you remember, one of the questions I raised was, what is inside? Don't give me medication, I don't know what is inside. Because when I go to any, any chemist in South Africa, even when a doctor gives you, he gives you sure. medication that tells what is inside. What are the contents? And they didn't tell us the contents because there was an agenda that they were hiding from us. Now on that very issue, I think if we do have time, I want to come back to this issue around um, allegations or, uh, or people saying that they have had some injuries as a result of the vaccine. Now, mm. of course, that is uh, Reverend Kenneth Meshwe, the African Christian Democratic Party president, speaking to us about the party's recently launched manifesto ahead of the elections later this year. We take a quick break. Um, so to t uh, today returns after this. Welcome back. Uh, you are still watching Soweto today. Before the break, we started the conversation on the recently launched African Christian Democratic Party's 2024 election campaign manifesto. We are still joined by ACDP President Reverend Kenneth Meshwe to unpack the party's objectives detailed in its manifesto. Now, Reverend, just before the break, you and I were chatting about the issue around COVID-19 and very briefly now continuing from where we had left off. Obviously, you had highlighted that we weren't aware of what the ingredients were, so mm. to speak, in the vaccine. What's the plan as far as the individuals who say they have suffered COVID-19 vaccine injuries? Um, what, what, what plans are there to obviously assist these individuals from the ACDP? Well, perspective? we advise them to claim compensation and those that can to sue government for lying to them because government said these are safe, okay? Safety was the main thing, main thing and they knew it was not true. The fact that the manufacturers did not want to take responsibility for the outcome was a clear indication that something must be wrong 
something must be wrong. And yet, they allowed South Africans to suffer uh, the consequences of believing them, even when they were not telling the mm. truth. So the best thing is they have to pay for lying to people. Reverend, let's pick up on a, a theme that we left off on earlier, and that was around the issue of energy, of course. Now, one of the key areas of concern that you highlighted is the issue of en energy. What do you think needs to be done in order to see an end to load shedding, as well as uh, to bring some relief to citizens as far as the fuel prices are concerned. Let's be honest, fuel is quite expensive. Mm. One of the most important things, and this obviously we'll say it over and over again, is that democracies all over the world build their economies on coal. Okay? They use coal power stations. Um, and they have very strong economies today. Now that we also want to build our economy, they are saying to us, no guys, you can't, you should not lose coal. But the very people who say, do not lose coal, they are accepting, they are requesting, we want to buy coal for you. Why do they want to buy it? They are storing it because they know that if we allow all our stations to degenerate and to die, we will have nothing in return. Okay? Solar is okay for as long as it's not raining. If you have rain for, for a month, what are you going to do? Where are you going to get power? So solar alone is definitely not going to help South Africans. Windmills also will not help South Africans because you need wind for those turbines to move. So over the years, ACB is saying, let us have clean technology. We must find clean technology in order to ensure that this coal does not emit as much gas, uh, that people pollution as it is happening at this stage. And we also are concerned about the workers. If you look at the workers who call work at the coal mine and those that have worked working for, for these solar panels, once the panels are in there, they are there, all right? You don't need many of them, many mm. workers, to ensure that everything is working right. They cut the numbers, so people are going to lose jobs. They must not mislead the people, and that's what the ACDP is saying, maintain all our power stations. And those that they are saying their lifespan is about to expire, you can extend that. All right? You can extend it. They can if they want to. But because they've been given money and promised money that if you do away with coal, we are going to help you, we are going to... ACDP is saying, let us use and not throw away what we know has helped the world, which is coal. I grew up with money that my mother got from selling Maguinya. These mothers who are selling maguinya, uh, you know that they put maguinya on the stove from Baola, uh, that needs coal. Without coal, how are we going to run Baola that you, you, are, you are able to, to cook in order to bring food on the table of your people? So we are refusing as ACDP to throw the baby with the bathwater. If okay. you say we, are, we don't want pollution, fine, let's find a way of reducing the pollution. But don't get rid of coal, because if you do that, thousands of people are going to lose their jobs. And at this stage, we don't want people losing their jobs, we want people retaining their jobs and getting more jobs, because with jobs, they will have a better life at home. A major concern for economic growth, of course, is the issue around uh, policy uncertainty. So you make mm. mention in your manifesto of removing policy uncertainty, such as that relating to land. Can you tell us more about what that, uh, what that entails and uh, what your plans would be as far as land is concerned? Now, on land, we are saying when you want to expropriate land, number one, you start with state land. Government land. Government has a lot of land that is lying fallow. That's not doing anything. But when you want to take land, to take land that is already in use, used by other people, be it farmers or whatever, you must compensate. ACDP is opposed to expropriation of land without compensation. Because when a person buys land, uh, they buy it with an I uh, with the thought of investing. And if you invest in the future, you're going to build on that land. You're going to improve infrastructure on that land. So for government to come and say, we want this land and we're not going to give you anything for it, we say that is wrong, that is unjust, and we don't want to live in a country where government is promoting injustice. Okay? We say expropriation with compensation. And we are very clear on that. We are very certain on that, and this is the kind of policy that people want to hear, that these people are firm on this issue, they are not going to change. 
government sometimes one minister will say this another minister like on on coal okay they, they are in disagreement so people will never be sure handlingly what is government policy because Mantashe would say coal the president will say no coal you know no people want to be certain on um, energy ACDP is saying you can mix but we are saying the power stations that we have sure. based on coal those one must be protected and they must be properly serviced in order to extend their life policy is clear on that one we don't mind the mix but the major one and it's not going to change is coal and then the second one is on, on the issue of uh, land we are all our members know you cannot take from somebody Indeed. without paying sure. you don't want to take from peter to give to paul because at the end both peter and paul are going to suffer they are both going to be uh, uh, hungry so pay for the investments that they've made on that land no, m uh, most definitely, and thank you for that, um, uh, Reverend. I think the one thing that we will definitely get back on to is the issue of crime, the issue of state capture, mm -hmm. major concerns for the vast majority of South Africans, um, and I think we definitely have to uh, chat about that. But that is, of course, ACDP President K Kenneth Meshwe. Um, they're talking to us through the party's stance on various issues affecting the country, as detailed in their manifesto. Let's park it here for now. We come back to you with uh, Soweto today after this break. Welcome back to Soweto Today. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. We're getting closer to the end of the show, of course, and we have been discussing the 2024 election campaign manifesto of the African Christian Democratic Party. We continue the conversation with Reverend Kenneth Meshwe, who is the president of uh, the ACDP, of course. Reverend Meshwe, thank you for staying with us indeed. Uh, this is obviously an issue that is close to your heart, it's close to many South Africans' hearts, and that is the issue of state capture and corruption. Now, there's a detail in your manifesto that you uh, intend on approaching the international civil courts as a means to try to rectify um, the issue of, of corruption and state capture. Now, what is the thinking behind that? And do you truly believe that the billions of rands that have been stolen is recoverable? Definitely. Um, what has made uh, state capture, particularly corruption, to entrench itself is for people to know that whatever I steal, even if I might be arrested and be sent to jail, when I come back, I'm going to enjoy those millions and billions. The ACDP would want to see that when a person is arrested and they're jailed, every cent they stole must be paid back. Okay, what we think will help is to empower even whistleblowers. We believe whistleblowers must be honored, and to show them honor, give them part of the loot, a percentage of the loot. That is something that can be debated and agreed upon, and everything's done transparently and openly for people to know. If you expose people who are stealing and that money is recovered, then you're going to get. A slice from that people will be helpful because if people the citizen three does not support government government will not win a war over this all right people must know that government hates corruption it's not part of corruption mm. they hate corruption and they are serious about doing away with corruption now when you approach international courts and you say we know our billions are in that bank our billions are there they will cooperate because they want to, to, to say to people that as international bodies, they want mm, justice mm. for everybody. So we want to do that, and we believe that can be done successfully so that the money that has been looted in South Africa will come back to South Africa and benefit the people of South Africa. Now, one of the reasons why there's so much stealing and looting in South Africa is that the criminals in South Africa know that there is no punishment for them. There is no fear for punishment. The word fear is not used. Unfortunately, it's only the law-abiding citizens who fear criminals. But the right thing is, criminals must fear the arm of the law. Criminals must know that they will, they're going to be given harsh punishment. Within, within that very theme of, of fear of the law, when it comes to crime, you mentioned reviewing the parole system mm. so as to deny bail for certain categories of crime, such as murder and rape. 
armed robbery as well as car hijacking. Now, what would you say to those who would then in turn argue that it's against Christian values from a forgiveness perspective and a redemption perspective if you're denying accused people bail or parole in those particular instances? People who say Christians is against Christian principles do not understand scriptures. Mm -hmm. The scriptures are not against punishing the wicked. The wicked must be punished. That's why when you look at Romans 13 as an example, when it speaks about the government being uh, ordained by God, they say a government, uh, the authority has a sword. And a sword is not something to play around with. Mm -hmm. A sword is a dangerous weapon. So those who break the law must be dealt with. Those who break the law must be punished so that the law-abiding citizen will be encouraged to remain law-abiding, knowing that if I misbehave like them and commit a crime, I'm going to be punished severely. So criminals in South Africa, actually all over the world, Criminals in other countries in the world, they know that you go to South Africa and uh, you do your crime. If you are arrested, you are not like you are arrested, then you will be one of the few. If you are arrested, but there are always a way out. That is why our borders are porous. And ACDB says, close the borders. Everybody who come in here must come legally. And those who come legally must hand over their fingerprints and their also, also their DNA must sub subject themselves to a DNA test. I was robbed myself a month ago, two months ago in, Sorry, in December. Yeah. Okay? I was robbed. And after the police did the investigation, they said, hey, we cannot trace those guys because they are foreigners. We don't have their fingerprints. They are foreigners. For how long are South Africans going to be subjected to criminality because of people who are not known? who nobody knows where they come sure. from, and nothing's been done about it. ACDP wants to change that. Criminals must be punished. International criminals must know that you play games in South Africa, you do crime in South Africa, the punishment is going to be very severe. Reverend, very quickly, I'm sure myself, as well as the people watching at home, would want to know, let's say, Reverend Kenneth Mashra becomes president tomorrow, how you would deal with our international affairs. I mean, what are your thoughts on the Israel-Hamas war and also on the thinking behind wanting to restore full diplomatic relations with Israel in this instance? We, from the beginning, said negotiation is the best thing to do, okay? We, we also want honesty from the side of government and the international community. When I spoke about the war taking mm. place in Gaza, I said within three to four weeks, this war can be ended. But there are three minimums that must happen. Three uh -huh. minimums. The first thing, when this war started, Israel was saying they want to get their hostages. They want to get them back. They want to save them. All right? So release them. You want the war to stop? This was what caused it. Release them. That's number one. And number two, we are saying close all tunnels that are being used to enter into other countries. Okay, that are being used to hide weapons, to hide the wrongs that you are doing. If you, you and I, miss, you are Mr. Brook, you are known as Mr. Brook. And then somebody who says to you, I don't want you to leave. I want you dead. I want your children and your wife raped. And that person becomes your neighbor. You won't like it? I won't like it. You won't be safe. None of us will be safe. Now, when your neighbor is saying, if I get an opportunity... I'm going to repeat what I said on the 7th of October, what I did on the 7th of October. Uh -huh. Then that person means they are intending to continue killing and, re and, and, killing and, and raping. Fair enough. All right? That, that, that's what they're saying. But no, no, what I'm, one, what, I'm, what I'm saying is we're out of time. I mean, point really well okay, made. I, I was hoping to hear from you as well is what are some of your plans in the lead up to elections okay. as the campaign heats up now, the campaign trail heats up. But that was, of course, Reverend Kenneth Meshwe, the president of the African Christian Democratic Party, speaking to us about the party's election manifesto, which was launched at the weekend, as well as the ACDP's upcoming uh, plans. That's how we wrap up today's episode of Soweto Today. Remember, we love hearing from you, so please feel free to talk to us about the episode by simply sending us an email to Soweto Today at SowetoTV.co.za. Alternatively, you can call or WhatsApp us on 081-531-8857. From myself, Gershwell Brooks, and the rest of the team, good night and thank you for watching. Stay with us for your latest news update with Masachaba Kobola. Uh, coming up next.